Hugging her doll, Navanway rolled over to watch the shapes, gaze still hazy with sleep. Most of the time, she liked the way they became stories. Another roll of thunder ended with a creak in the hall outside her door. Not scared. Navanway squeezed her doll, the count from Sesame Street. Man had promised that he would protect her at night, because vampires could be scary, but this one was her friend. You can always count on the count, she'd say as she tucked Miv in. She remembered this and pretended to close her eyes as her door started to open. The shadow skate cast spots on her mom, who smiled. I know you're not sleeping, not when the storm is calling you. Mev opened one eye and peered over the count. It's telling lots of stories tonight, child. You tell me one. Ah, her mom wagged a finger. I'd never talk over nature. It's rude. Yeah, the family sighed and closed her eyes. As Mam crossed silently over to the bed, she brought the scent of oil paint with her. Bowing over, she brushed her daughter's wild hair back from her face, pressed a kiss to her cheek. Sleep when you're ready, she whispered. Enjoy this magnificent lullaby. Miv met her mom's gaze. She had a streak of cerulean blue paint along her cheekbone. Miv reached out to touch it, and her mom caught her fingers. She grinned at the blue spot of paint on the tip of one. Oops, I'm messy again, huh? It's pretty. Only my fair one would say that. Mam's eyes crinkled at the corner. Nivan, we watched her leave, work skirts swishing around her legs. Niv loved her mom's work skirt, a full cotton rag to write my brushes on. She was so pleased when they found it at a garage sale. In the hall, Mam called back. Love you, bug. We've got a big day tomorrow. It's someone's birthday. And it was lost to another crack of thunder. Soon, Niv must have fallen asleep, because the next time she opened her eyes, it was still dark, but the storm was over. She wondered if it was her birthday. A loud crash and her mom crying out jerked her alert. Scrambling from the cover, she called, ma'am? Another crash and glass breaking pulled her from the bed. With the count tight in one arm, she padded quickly down the hall to her mom's garage studio. Stepping onto the landing, she stopped at the top of the stairs, gasping, trying to understand what she saw. Her mom was bent over the table. A man was on her mom. She was struggling. He was pushing against her. And with every push, she grunted, good, good. Breath heaving, Nivanwe yelled, stop it. The man looked up, void of expression. Then he sneered, pushed. Ma'am screamed, Nivanwe, run, run. But she couldn't move. She saw the man push one last time and groan loudly. His shoulders slumped, and he was still for seconds before stretching. She saw a knife in the air. Her mom twisted elbowed him, and he started to fall back, but caught her hair as she turned to look at her daughter. Suddenly, she gasped, eyes wide as she choked. Run, baby. Nivanwe's feet wouldn't move. The man straightened, pushed her mom forward to collapse on the floor. The knife was smeared red, cadmium red feet, mom's favorite color. The man leered at Nivanwe. His belt buckle clinked as he pulled his pants up and zipped, but didn't fasten them. She knew she should run. But her body didn't seem to be hers. It wouldn't move. Miv could only stand in place, clutching the count more tightly than ever as the man started towards the stairs. He paused at the bottom. The door to the alley was open, and he glanced out before looking up at her. Don't you love a good story? He raised his leg to take the first step up. Ivanwe began to shake. 
tremors rippled through her small body. Eyes filling, she found her legs again and fled into the hallway to bury herself in the very back of the coat closet. Pulling one of the coats down, she cringed when the hanger clunked against the door, and she buried her face into the fabric. It smelled like her mom, tea tree lotion and oil paint. Her eyes burned, and Miss tried her best not to cry. She heard things, the creak of, creak of floorboards and the scrape of something along the wall. She bit her tongue so she wouldn't hear her teeth clattering. Just outside the closet, the man said, wonder what's in here? The door opened. His belt buckle clanked as he reached in to push the coats aside with one hand. In the other, the knife hung lazily by his stunt leg. The hall light glinted off the blade, a bright burst that shifted as he moved. Niv, Niv was transfixed by it and the stain. Her heart froze when she realized he was looking at her. The knife lifted briefly as he shrugged. Too easy. And she saw his fingers, thick and curling for her hair. She screamed as she braced herself against the wall and kicked and kicked, and the man swore and stepped back. A little bitch. Out of nowhere, a hand snapped the side of his head, wiping him off his feet, knocking him down the hall. And a different hand snapped the place he'd been, face tight with rage, and continued towards Mom's attacker. She heard something slam into the wall and felt the vibration on the floor, a grunt, a gasp. Miv was about to scramble to her feet to finally and really run when a third man appeared. He squatted down in the doorway and looked at her gently. Are you hurt? Quivering, she curled up again and shook her head. He nodded and looked back down the hall, watching. She heard a weird gurgled moan and it scared her, but this man was calm and somehow this calmed her. She peeked at him. His arms were vague, the muscles made shape under the shapes under the skin. She knew it was because they wrapped over and under each other. Man had shown her that in one of her anatomy books. Then there was something like a sigh, and after some time, a weight dropping to the floor. The man looked at her again, his hair blonder where the light touched it, his eyes king's blue bright. Man had taught her to notice these things. He tilted his head to match hers and said, I'm just going to shut the door a moment, but you're safe now, okay? She nodded. Watched him rise and step back to close the door, but not all the way. A sliver of light outlined a jumble of shoes and boots in front of her. She heard something heavy being dragged, and when she bowed forward, she saw a man's attacker sliding by. The sound of dragging continued into the studio. She could hear something bumping on the steps. Her eyes filled, and she rocked with the sound. She wanted man. She wanted man. And then she realized the other man was in the hall. She walked, rocked harder, squeezed the count tighter. Shh, child, you're safe now. And finally held her breath. She heard it, but didn't hear it. She was losing it. Then she felt different, tingly, like she did when man pulled her into her arms and whispered in her ear. She nodded and sat very still as the door was very carefully pulled open. She saw legs, and the man lowered himself to one knee, bending slightly to be at her eye level. He had a face that man would like to paint, and thick, dark hair that she knew from experience was no fun to comb. He pressed his lips together, and she could tell he was sad. When you're ready, we'll call the police. His voice was soft. Ma'am? I'm sorry. Lips quivering, she stared at him desperately. What's your name? Miss Onley? He smiled lightly. That's a lovely name. She swallowed. Who are you? I probably shouldn't say. Why? Do you have family in town? She nodded. Are they good to you? Niv nodded again. She knew he wanted her to come out, that he wanted her to be cared for. Taking a deep breath, she scooted through the boots she clambered over when she hid. Holding the count close and pulling her mom's coat, she stopped and looked up at the man. Are you going to get in trouble? I could. And he seemed sad again. Her eyes burned. Can I see ma'am? Bowing over her, he touched his palm to her cheek. Close your eyes, he whispered, and see her. Miv was afraid, but when she finally did, she saw her mom happy and teasing her, mad because she burned dinner again, painting and teaching her about colors, taking a nap on the couch in her studio, giving her the count, and finally in her doorway saying, love you, bug. Then tears came. She was aware of the man picking her up, taking her to the kitchen, and sitting in a chair with her gathered in his arms. When she found breath again, Niv straightened up and looked him in the face. 
She thought of how her mom had taught her to always be polite. Thank you, mister. His eyes glistened like man's did when she was pretending not to cry. He looked at her doll. And who is this? Count von Count. She screwed her mouth to the side. She wanted to be brave. Man gave him to me so that I wouldn't be scared of scary things. She sniffed. She wanted mister to know how smart her mom was. She said he's a vampire and that they're scary, but if one is your friend, you never have to be scared at all. You can always count on the count, she told him so. A sob heaved inside her. I want my mom. I should have given him to her. New tears came and he held her patiently. When she could sit up again, he used the hem of his t-shirt to wipe her nose, the pad of his thumb to clear her face. Finally, she looked up, studied his dark eyes, the lines of his bone structure that ma'am always told her to pay attention to. Life will hurt for a while, for you've lost someone so very important. He paused, pressed his palm over her heart. But you have something over here. I know it's not the same, but it's something. And Niv felt warm inside, and the idea that she should remember the feelings cemented in her thoughts. He circled his arms around her, squeezed her lightly. She thought she could count on him, too. The other man came into the room, and Nivon returned to see him pick up the phone and turn away as he made the call. She looked back at Mr. He whispered, we won't leave until we arrive. So she sat quietly, her well of tears spilling. After a short while, Mr. Rose, still holding her and giving her a last hug before sitting her back in the chair, he gathered her mom's coat, wrapped her it around her with a sad turn of his mouth, and she knew somehow that he would remember her. The sound of sirens drew near, burping as they stopped outside the house. The other man opened the kitchen window, but not enough to climb up. Meeting her gaze, he ducked his chin one. Mr. looked at her, nodded, and then they shimmered. Miv blinked. Her mouth shaped wow as they burst into a thousand pieces in more colors than she knew. And there was no sound as they surged into two effervescent streams, light crackling through the colors that ribboned through the room. Mr. swirled around her, and her skin felt prickly with little shocks, and she felt his goodbye before they flowed through the narrow opening of the window. That was how she remembered it. The police, of course, didn't believe him when she told them. Angels did. And I think I forgot to thank Chris. <laughs>